Hey guys, Matt here. Welcome to Learn to Discern. So pride is one sin that I think every Christian struggles with at one time or another. And for many people, it's something that you are going to struggle with throughout your life. And one of the reasons for that is that pride can manifest itself in so many different ways. So as believers who are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, we obviously want to fight against our sin. We want to fight against pride and we want to cultivate humility and be humble as we follow the Lord. But sometimes when we think about doing so, we can feel a little bit confused. How do I make myself become more humble? How do I cultivate humility in my life? And so what I hope to do with this video today is to give us an encouragement, give you some really practical, helpful tips from the book of Job that I hope will help cultivate humility in your own life. But before we get to our teaching, if you guys want to help promote Christian content here on YouTube, please go ahead and take a second now to subscribe to my channel and thank you in advance. All right, so let's talk about the book of Job and how we see something within the book that can help us to have greater humility. So I'm assuming you're at least somewhat familiar with the book of Job, but just in case you are not, in the beginning of the book, we are told that Job is a very righteous man, a godly man, that he loves the Lord, that he serves the Lord, um, that he even does so with his family. Yet we know through a sequence of events that Job ends up suffering mightily. And it's through no fault. It's no one particular sin that he has committed. In fact, Satan goes to God and basically asks for permission to cause Job to suffer. And that's what happens. Job starts losing everything. He's losing, losing his livestock. He loses his children. They die. He is infected with painful sores all over his body. So Job is suffering horrifically. Well, the, the majority of the book of Job centers around this conversation between Job and a few of his friends. In essence, Job is saying, I have done nothing wrong. I do not deserve to be suffering like this. This is not because of any personal sin that I have committed. And Job's friends are telling him, you did sin. Just confess, Job. Just say what you did. And so Job initially starts off in the right. It says that uh, right off the bat when he started suffering that he did not accuse God of wrongdoing. But as the conversation with his friends progresses and as more and more time of suffering is passing, we do see that Job starts to get a little bit complainy. He starts to grumble and complain about his situation, and it seems like he is questioning what God is doing through all of his suffering. And so after Job has started to grumble and complain a little bit, God shows up, uh, I think it's in chapter 38 of Job, and he shows up in a tempest and begins to question Job. And he's asking all of these questions like, Job, where were you? When I created the earth, when I hung its foundation on nothing, you know, surely you were there. You must know all this information. Tell me, Job. And he's just peppering him with question after question after question. And really the point of these questions is not that Job is actually going to give an answer. God is showing to Job, you are not as great as you think you are. Yes, you are a righteous man compared to other people, but not compared to me. And so Job endures quite a few questions from the Lord. And it's at the very end of those questions in the final chapter of the book that Job responds. And I'm going to pick it up here in verse 4. Job says, Here and I will speak. I will question you and you make it known to me. And that's quoting God. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Job had apparently thought pretty highly of himself. He thought, I haven't done anything wrong. I don't deserve to be suffering in this sort of way. But he only thought that way because he had not truly seen God. He did not have a complete understanding, a complete revelation of who God is, how holy, how powerful, how mighty, how majestic God truly is. And when he gets that, he says, now my eye sees you, therefore I despise myself. He's like, now that I see you, I see your worth, I see your value. When I look at myself, 
I hate myself and I repent in dust and ashes. Friends, really, I think that's the big takeaway for all of us. If we start thinking about how can I become more humble, how do I get rid of the pride in my life, it's really not about focusing more on ourselves. We should be taking time to focus on the Lord because the more that we see Him correctly, the more that we see how much more holy He is than us, we see His perfections. We see all of his attributes. We will stand in awe of him and we will see that there is a vast chasm of separation between his value and our own value. And that is what will ultimately lead us to humility. I think you see this common thread all throughout scripture. It seems like the people who are closest to God, meaning they really get the greatest glimpses of who God is, they are the ones who seem to respond with the most humility. I think about in the Old Testament, Moses is called the most humble man to have lived. But think about all of the wonderful experiences that Moses had, speaking with God face to face. You think that could puff him up and make him proud, but it actually causes him to be humble. Why? I, th- I think it's pretty natural to say the more time he is spending with God, the more he is seeing of God's excellencies and the more he is seeing his own sinfulness. I'm also thinking about in the New Testament, the story of Peter. Peter is uh, with Jesus and Jesus tells him to cast off his nets uh, and, and you know let him down for a catch. And Peter's like, Master, we've been fishing all night, haven't caught anything. But because you say so, at your word, I will let them down. And when he catches all the fish, he all of a sudden has this understanding of who is in his presence. And how does he respond? Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. When he sees the majesty and the power and the glory of Jesus, his response is, man, I'm a sinner. The apostle Paul gets caught up to the third heaven, yet he calls himself the chief of sinners. I am the chief of sinners. Friends, we all want to have humility as we follow the Lord, but in order for us to do that, we need to have a right understanding of who God is. So I would encourage you, take time to study the attributes of God, to really think deeply and meditate on who God is. And when you do so, when you compare yourself, you will realize, I am nothing. You'll be like the psalmist who says, what is man that you are mindful of him? God, who am I that you would even care for me? But we understand that he does care. He does love us. But when we think about who he is, it absolutely will help us to cultivate humility in our lives. Okay, friends, I hope this video is helpful to you and blesses you as you follow the Lord. If it was helpful and you want to get content like this out to more people, please make sure you take a second now to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, God bless.